And this is video two of the XML port series. You're welcome. And today we are going to import data into this table. The table contains number, description, and amount. And by default, it has got the data inserted and inserted by, which will basically be able to automatically um, insert or it will be triggered in the on insert trigger of the xml port while we run um, the import in the first video we looked at the structure of the xml file and we looked at the parent nodes the child nodes and the siblings and we were able to see how XML is extensible, meaning that we can create our own tags. It is not predefined like HTML is, but we went into more detail about the structure and we generated a file. So you can look at the first video if uh, of this series if you aren't conversant with uh, the structure of XML files. And we also said that XML ports e encapsulate the creation of XML files because creation of XML files can be tedious. And today we are just going to use one specific specific format, which will be the uh, fix the variable text format to be able to import files because you'll find there are files that come maybe data from another system will will most likely be in variable text if the system cannot be able to directly um, connect to business central via apis then you'll find that the data from the other system will be in the form of variable text so how can we be able to import to these three fields so it's not a tough task it's very easy so we'll just focus on importing today and um, so this is the table and the page so the table has got a number a description and amount those are the most important fields you have three fields in that table so our XML port will be um, will be let me say will be triggered the import will be triggered when we click on the import or export action that is found in this XML port sample page. And the XML port sample, XML port itself is what will create. And so the, the snippet is just TXML port. And we will be able to say that it will be XML port sample. So we are expecting it to have that name. So I'll scroll down. So when we use the the snippet, we get pre-generated code that contains the schema and a request page. For now, I'll remove the request page. We don't need to be um, so specific or we don't need information in the request page for this particular video, but we might need. So think of it as similar to the ones in reports at the request page. But for this demonstration, we only need the XML port as is. So if I hit control space, we have different several properties for the XML port. You can see very many uh, file format and all that. So of importance is the format, which will set the format of the source expression for various data types. So what is the format of our source expression? The format that we have picked is variable text. So our schema contains a text element and this is our root node. So our root node is XML port sample. This is what the root node will be containing from our schema. Then now we need at, uh, we are using a table element to basically define a new table element in the X XML port. A table element. So a text element will not necessarily um, be tied to the database. We have several properties. So 
the format by default is usually XML, but we'd, we'd like to have variable text. Um, there is fixed text that forces us to define a length for that text, but here we are focused on variable text. So the text element is, um, we'll define a new text element in the XML port, and we are using the text element to define our root node. We looked at the structure of XML, it contains a root in the first video, so this is what we'll be defining our root node. But we are getting data from the database, so we need a table element to be able to basically get data from XML port sample. So basically, it will be getting data from XML port sample. So we can't use the same this is the root node and this is the um, the parent node. You can see the parent node is complaining already because we can't have the same um, name. So I'll just say XML P sample like that underscore sample to, to be able to get our uh, source table to define. So this is similar to reports when you have this name pointing to the main table. So this sample has got this number. It's good to maintain the same number in the name for the field. So a field attribute will define a new field attribute in the XML port. But in our case, we don't need a field attribute because a field attribute will just be explaining. An attribute is describing, maybe ID description. So if we set it like this, we'll just be having an attribute instead of a field name, uh, a field element, which will basically um, will be defining a new field element in the XML port. And a field element is pointing to the database. A field attribute doesn't point to the database. So we need a field element that points to the database. And we have our our number that is pointing to the database, another field element that is also pointing to the database that will be, okay, it will be the description. And the last field element will be, there's no snippet for that, the amount in our field, which will basically be having that amount. And uh, so we have defined our source to be from uh, the database. Okay, what else do we have in terms of properties? So in our table element, we have several properties like auto replace will set whether imported records automatically replace existing records with the same primary key. So this is a very um, risky uh, property because it can basically be able to replace all the data if it finds the same primary key regardless of all any information that is in the other field it will recreate like it will delete and replace the data so be very careful with auto replace for table elements and auto save will set whether imported records out are automatically written to the table so the default is usually true for auto save and auto update will basically be able to set whether a record in the database with the same primary key as the record um, in the imported XML port is updated with values from the imported record. So do we want to auto-update? So auto-update is really safe. In case the primary key is the same, it will only update the records that are new. So it's advisable to have auto-update to be true in the in the event that you're using the XML port to update records. But if it's you're sure that this XML port will only be used for importing records that are clean from scratch, which is 
uh, basically can't be the case in a real time environment um, you'll find that there are cases where you need to have um, uh, records automatically uh, inserted you or updated based on what you want so let's just say auto replace is false we don't want to auto replace auto save is true okay so we have several others like uh, uh, flow fields description so this is for internal use linking fields when we have nested tables and the link table we set the table that should be linked maximum or cars minimum or cars and all that so and source table view for setting the filter and all that request filter fields if you'd like to have the default fields for uh for filters maybe you only want to display a certain filter similar to reports so this property is just similar to reports but yeah let's go and here we do have auto calc field similar 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 and all that with xml name all right let's focus on importing this data to the table because there are so many other properties but we just like to import data into this table so the page will be automatically displayed when we um when we open the uh when we publish then we do have the format as variable text let me repeat this because our text is it doesn't have a fixed value so if we had fixed text here because the options are fixed text or xml which is the default or variable text so fixed text will um will force us to put the length property but we'd like to have variable text so how have we saved i've created an a uh, csv file comma delimited i'll be able to demonstrate that in a few as i publish so we are publishing so the file contains uh, data like this so the number automatically the order of the fields should be the same the order of the fields that we're importing should be the same as the order of the fields that the way we insert it on excel so we can say that uh, the number let's say the number will contain maybe m m1 or and then the description and then the amount maybe such an amount and you follow it like this to or to be to be able to have all the records inserted in this way so the key format here to save is the csv comma delimited so you make sure that this is the format that you have saved your file with using to make sure that you get uh, the right import working so our file has published and we only we have this xml xml sample xml port sample blank table that doesn't contain any value at all at the moment but we will be able to import into this file and uh, be able to get a value so if i click on import stroke export and we are able to choose the direction by default the di direction is both for the xml port to mean that we can use it for import or export but for now we'd like to use it for import and then we'll say so this is the csv that i've created in that format that i've shown that you have then the code or the number then the description then the amount and then you save us csv comma delimited this is my file and the type should definitely be uh, microsoft excel comma separated value so in the event that you open it with uh, I don't know if Notepad is here. Let's try Visual Studio Code just once before we import. So we can see this is the file that we'd like to import. We have, it is separated by commas. So the, this is the first, this is the code, the name, and then the value. So 
this is the format of a comma separated values file by default it will appear like this when opened so there are others without description others without amount and this is the structure but in excel it's easier to preview in excel because you'll create and then you save us that comma separated values so csv files they'd like uh, it's always good to have them closed otherwise it will detect that it's open when you're trying to import so we will basically be able to open our file for importation and uh, there we are we have our file imported automatically it's been so this is the structure if we we are to reopen it again i don't think the problem was or was uh, okay if, if it was open in vs code i don't think it will be having a big problem but it, we can test it but when it's in excel most most of the times that i've tried if the file is already open it doesn't allow importation but it's always good to have it closed to avoid errors anyway but this is the the file and this is how it has been imported so we have um, a description an amount data inserted automatically uh, getting the value of uh, the date the date and time so we have the name the number description and the amount automatically inserted so let's try something so if you were to change maybe one amount here the one that is 83 499 to 78 and then re-import the same file again let me try importing it while it's open in visual studio code let's see what it gives us so the value has been updated to 78 without affecting any other value because we are it has it automatically detected what we are trying to update it's not even um there's no discrepancy in terms of this uh, particular upload so the minimum occurs means <coughs> there's a property that known as it's known as minimum occurs so if i say that the minimum occurs by default it's once like this description <coughs> should occur at least once in our import otherwise it will throw an error that there is no value that is being imported even if you have 1000 columns at least it should appear once so if you you'd like the one of the columns to be blank in some cases you can add the property of minimum occurs to zero so that maybe that particular import or that particular property is not usually needed most of the time so when you have that minimum occurs to zero it means the person who is importing uh, must not enter that particular value they can import without having uh, without having to enter any value into that xml port so that's it for this video on um, importation uh, in using csv comma delimited the variable text format so i'll see you in the next video we will look at exportation and uh, the xml format see you there if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one